Hey guys, Cave Ken here. Um, I'm not at my cave today and this isn't my house. Um, <laughs> I am um, today at an abandoned uh, film set. Basically, that's what this is in the background. But um, we are also in an abandoned old uh, steel plant. So, why I am here, you clicked on it, you probably already know what's going to happen. First thing first, um, you may have noticed I haven't uploaded any videos recently. I'm sorry for that, but I am actually moving my man cave to another location, which is bigger, better, and um, and and just better. So um, yeah, of course, this is, it's a lot of work to move all this stuff over, building new tables and things like that. So I already shot another video. I haven't come ar came around yet to edit it. Secondly, um, I got asked by a friend of mine to help them out for a TV show called Pisa. And um, his name is Mr. Science in the show. So they asked me if I can help them building a rocket sled, which is like, a, yeah, a sled that runs over a rope and it should supposed to hit a end target at the end made of wood, which I built them, I built them the whole system. I made the end stop using the K40 laser and it came out to work pretty nice. If you are a Patreon, you already saw pictures and videos of that because I posted most of it um, over there for a cup of coffee. You can watch this stuff. Following of uh, uh, that uh, job, they asked me to help them again. And uh, in this case, they want to demonstrate how a geyser works. And um, yeah, so I thought, well, we, well, there are several ways of doing this. We could use uh, an air cannon with some tubing and filling, filling this up with water, shooting out a nice uh, big fountain of water. But uh, apparently that's not what they wanted because it's a science show. They want to demonstrate how a geyser really works. They went uh, to Germany to film a geyser in nature and they want to rebuild this thing um, as high as possible. They wanted me to build the biggest artificial geyser there is. And I'm just uh, looking all the time on the left because first of all, I'm waiting for Joseph or Mr. Science. And secondly, there is some sort of an excavator starting tearing down the whole thing here. One thing I just want to mention because I find it very interesting is you see these houses there. Um, these are made out of wood, of course. It's a, it's a film set. And Paul, um, who I'm making videos with uh, sometimes, um, just like uh, 200 meters from here, um, he built a huge model set, um, which was, I think, seven meters on four meters width in a scale of one to 100. And then it moved up. The further up you go, the further up the scale went. Uh, I think the biggest one was one to 10. And uh, what he did basically, he built a, a whole area with forests and villages in 1 to 100 scale. And the camera is supposed to fly over that area and then tilt up slowly until we discover these two houses. And he rebuilt these two houses, the exact same thing, in a 1 to 10 scale at the end of this, um, of this model. And of course, as they were shooting in there, they had to build them in real size or a 1 by 1 size, 1 to 1 size, 1 to 1 size. So that's why they built it here. And as we are in the interior, well, you're not bothering with rain or even light because you can light it up artificially. So it is quite fascinating. And unfortunately, they tore down the model, so I could not show you um, this thing because it looked pretty awesome. And they also added some uh, special effects rain on that, like a one to a hundred scale rain. So almost mist um, that came down and then it has to gradually um, go over to 1 point, uh, one tenth scale rain and um, until they came here to the real deal. Um, yeah, quite interesting, at least for me. Um, let's go over, I will show you how I start this whole job. So I am farming for parts uh, as so often online and um, I just checked out, um, this is the geyser in Andernach, um, the one they went out filming. And this, by the way, is a cold water uh, geyser. So um, this works um, with carbonation. You have um, CO2 in the ground and it carbonates the water until it over carbonates the water. And then the bubbles are rising up and displacing the water and the water fountain shoots out. Um, they want me to build a hot water geyser. So um, in this case, we need to boil water to its boiling point and then um, the bubbles uh, will rise up and start building a pressure inside of a pipe, shooting out the water fountain in the, in the top. Now, in order to do this, I would need some sort of a presser pressure vessel or um, some, yeah, some closed containment where I can heat up water to its boiling point and make it spritz out at the top. I thought, well, I could go with one of these sterilizers. Um, they use to sterilize medical equipment. Um, they are propane or electrical powered 
you can heat up water in them. They are pressure tight and uh, I would only need to remove the handle and replace it with a pipe nipple or something. I can thread uh, pipes into it. And in order for the pipes, I thought I could use my, um, we have those uh, huge rain towers uh, for making special effects rain. And I thought, well, I could um, use those, um, yeah, to th uh, thread them in here and build up a nice tower. Those are two inch, no, one inch uh, threaded pipes. And as you can see, it comes with a thermometer. I could even add a, um, a pressure gauge down here to see what's going on in there. So I thought, well, maybe there is something um, that um, can be found that already has some more of these requirements I have. Uh, this one, for example, has a little outlet valve here, but it is uh, too small. Um, pressure cookers, all this stuff. And then I um, stumbled over distilling apparatuses. Um, yeah, and as you can see, they already have this riser pipe here um, for the conden condenser pipes. You have a um, thermometer up here. Um, you have an outlet valve here. I could add a pressure gauge there. And I found this Polish company who are uh, modifying beer kegs um, to distill uh, alcohol. Um, they added uh, two heater coils down here. You have two plugs. So you have 4,000 watts of heating power. You have a thermometer, you have an outlet valve. And the best part is you have um, this thick outlet on the top. And I can show you here you can even choose which, yeah, which outlet um, connection you want to have. And um, well, in the beginning, I thought I could use Camlock because I still have Camlock parts, but um, it is not listed here. So tree clamp um, should be fine as well. Um, I would go with tree clamp then. Um, after that, I thought, well, I can uh, check out what tree clamp stuff I can gather together online. And I found, uh, first of all, I found this, which is quite cool because um, this way uh, we see what's going on in there. And especially for the camera, quite interesting. Um, so we see when the water starts boiling and we see what's going to happen. And this has already a two inch tree clamp adapter. So um, yeah, it hooks up directly to the uh, beer keg, uh, which is almost perfect. So I thought maybe I can um, make it even better by adding a little riser pipe um, from the beer keg to um, the side tower. So um, yeah, it, it's just a little bit higher. It looks better and it's easier to, um, yeah, to, to take pictures of it with the camera when it's a little bit higher than the beer keg, which has like a little... Um, you have you you have this border around it, so um, it's better to rise this up and then put on the uh, side tower. And um, to make things perfect, on the same web page, I found even this adapter, which is, as it says, a two-inch tree clamp to one-inch female pipe thread adapter. So I can thread in the water pipings uh, or water pipes I have straight into this thing. And um, also tree clamp is quite nice because I can build a whole system that can be hung from the ceiling um, using uh, water uh, pipes. And then at the end we have those quick adapters so we don't have to thread anything, but we can stick this together, put uh, one of these um, clamps around it. And um, yeah, and that should be a perfect little system. Um, yeah, I go ahead and order these parts and then we'll see if everything works out as uh, expected. Five days later and look what arrived today. Um, yeah, the beer keg is there. Um, so finally I can move on with my build. Um, yeah, by the way, I only have nine days to finish this whole construction, so I cannot show you every little detail. But um, I tested this thing out this morning and it came out to be working very well. It's not the, the most beautiful job of welding, but it is all the way um pressure tight and uh, well it's fine it's okay so um yeah i got me some uh, o-rings took about 59 minutes to one hour to boil 50 liters of water inside here so um even way faster than i uh, yeah than i was uh, thinking um now uh, also this arrived the uh, stainless steel riser pipe nice and shiny and uh, the piece de la resistance what a nice piece of machined aluminium very nice, the side tower. I think that will uh, make a very nice uh, job of uh, providing insight into our artificial hot water geyser. Now, um, yeah, as I uh, thought, um, this is a two inch uh, tree clamp adapter and we can fit this on here. I have to do this uh, single handed. So I'm, does this stay in place? Yeah, carefully. 
So as you can see, this goes around here and then we will build up a, uh, a nice uh, strong connection. And uh, I already installed um, the top part, um, this, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the thread adapter to one inch pipe. So I tested it, um, it works. <laughs> it works with my rain stand um, pipes. So pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, we have the thermometer. I already added a, uh, a hose adapter here. So I will put on a, a Y piece. So we have our pressure uh, gauge and we can fill, uh, we have the fill line down here so we can fill the whole system um, from down below. We don't have to move to the top on the 11 meter mark to, um, to fill it. As I said, I cannot show you everything in detail because I have so much other things to do. And uh, so I already almost finished um, the top part. Um, which is uh, a one inch pipe. I made a clamp with a piece of wood. All this is wood. It's just supporting this thing. This is a plastic planter um, kind of, yeah, you know, um, the things you put underneath a planter. Uh, I drilled a hole in there and I uh, machined a part um, on the lathe, um, a nut that uh, also has some uh, holes in here. So the water that uh, comes back falls down inside of uh, this dish and then it can um, run back into the pipe to provide a second breakout of our artificial geyser. Now, uh, in order to uh, lift this up underneath the ceiling, I thought, well, um, I used some parts of um, of the rain towers that we already have, which is like a piece of uh, bigger pipe that fits onto the one inch pipe. And then we welded some nuts onto this and we have from there running uh, some cables. This will uh, be mounted to um, pieces of pipe underneath the top that will be like four or five meters underneath the top. From there we have the cable. So this supports the whole uh, construction. Then I uh, have kind of the same thing here. We have the same piece of pipe uh, with some nuts welded on and these uh, distance uh, pieces, uh, they will just provide uh, enough space so the cables do not slam into this thing because it's plastic, it will break off. So we have these riser parts and uh, yeah, so we run the cable through this and then we uh, will hook everything together using some parts and then we will pull it under the ceiling uh, using a chain lift also I already <laughs> I added some uh, started adding some artificial stones so it looks a little bit more like a natural geyser, geyser. Um, this by the way is cork we use this quite uh, often in special effects it's a nice stuff um, it's uh, cork as I said it is it looks like a uh, rock or um, bitumen or you know a piece of road so when you um, shoot this <laughs> through the air with an air cannon um, this looks very realistic and it looks like shrapnel or um, yeah, like any sort of debris that's um, raining down on the actors and it's super lightweight, it's soft, it does not hurt anybody. So very nice uh, thing to use. Also, it's heat resistant uh, as we are um, talking about quite high temperatures. Um, so I could not use any sort of foam. Um, yeah, I will wrap up for today. I will throw everything in the truck because tomorrow we will set up the whole thing in its entire size. <laughs> so yeah, let's hope the cherry picker will be there. We're good to go. All right, I'm getting the cherry picker in place. Uh, they dropped it off at the entrance, which is like a mile ride, but uh, eh, it's going fine. Could need a coffee. Joseph is just hanging up uh, the chain lift so we can uh, pull the whole construction up under the ceiling. And let's see how long the, uh, the actual uh, chain is. So it appears that the chain is not long enough, but um, well, we, we have a cherry picker, so it should be fine. Now Joseph is adding uh, some insulation, so uh, yeah, that just helps to keep everything warm. Alright, I think we're done. We hung this whole thing up, now we need to connect it there, so as you can see, uh, right there. Now come the person!
day we have our shooting day today and uh, yesterday's test was uh, a plain success it worked pretty pretty well and looked pretty awesome I haven't shown you the picture yet because I want you to see the result in its all, all its glory um, I set it up some lights um, to light up the ceiling because the ceiling has like a glass roof and um, yeah we're shooting against light so trying to compensate that a little bit so I will uh, follow uh, the situation while they are setting up and everything. Uh, I'm not be able to talk too much because you know sound and uh, camera stuff and uh, yeah but I try my best to show you what's going on. So the guys are recording some uh, footage uh, prior to the big test um, and uh, Joseph will demonstrate um, the experiment in a miniature version before we launch the big one. I just cut the power to the system because um, it was at 95 degrees centigrade and um, as we know water starts boiling at 100 degrees centigrade so I cut it so we have more control of what's going to happen. We don't want this thing to go off without um, being ready. Uh, on the other hand um, we noticed it yesterday and uh, Joseph calculated that the water um, supposed to be cooking or boiling at um, 104 degrees centigrade. Why? Well because there is this tower of water sitting on top of it and it pressures down um, the water that sits inside of the beer keg so um, it builds up pressure. Um, mathematically it should be around two bars. Um, my uh, pressure measurement thing um, just shows 1.4 bars maybe it's not calibrated correctly. Um, so um, the pressure of the water that pushes down onto the beer keg uh, and also the, the uh, atmosphere spherical pressure makes that the water uh, starts boiling at 104 degrees centigrade. Um, yeah, so I just cut the power. So um, yeah, let's have a look um, how the small version of this experiment will look like. That was quite a success. Everybody's happy. Everything worked out as planned. Um, they got the pictures they needed. Um, the fountain was quite impressive, uh, I must say. Um, we tested it in a way smaller scale and, uh, well, with less tubing. And um, it already came out pretty nicely, but this was awesome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, please leave a comment. What do you think? Um, as I heard before, um, this might be a world record uh, of the tallest man-made uh, geyser ever made. Um, of course it is a record that can be broken pretty easily by uh, building it a little bit taller than that but um, all after all it worked so that's the main reason uh, the main thing. Um, I have to wrap stuff right now and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. Um, I see you in the next one. Until then, see ya!